All right, and we are joined by Cameron Ekanayaka. Cameron, your first question will be from John Finneran. Hi, Cameron. Uh, just wanted to congratulate you on your uh, Rhodes Scholar uh, uh, offer and um, talk a little bit about uh, what, how you have, uh, uh, coming out of Eversburg, playing for an Eversburg program uh, with, a, with a coach like Kevin Bartz, how that helped prepare you both athletically and academically to go to, to Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, so coach Bartz is, you know, an amazing coach. Uh, I have a great relationship with coach. He actually just texted me recently. Um, uh, but as some people might know, I don't know if everyone knows, but coach Bartz is also a bio biology teacher at the high school. Um, so his um, emphasis on school uh, and as obviously football has been huge throughout my time in high school. Uh, and I think it transcended into college as well. Um, he was big in the classroom, uh, you know, not taking shortcuts in the classroom, not taking shortcuts on the field. And like I said, I think that transcended into my time in college uh, where, where school and football were um, expounded upon greatly um, in both sentences. So uh, being an athlete at Edwardsburg uh, helped me a lot actually in the, in the, in the process of coming to Notre Dame and being an athlete here as well. We'll go next to Eric Hansen. Hi, Cameron. Uh, Claire did quite a write-up about your academic interests, and I'm glad there are people in this world that are smarter than me, and you're one of them. But I was curious, with, the, with the, all the things that are going on with science right now, does any of what's going on with COVID and vaccine development, or is any of that up your alley in terms of interest or skill set? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, so kind of what I want to focus on before going to med school and what I potentially hope to focus on, uh, you know, if lucky enough to be granted the Rhodes Scholarship, um, is public policy um, and uh, also economic, uh, developmental economics, um, and, and kind of how those two are rolled out together, um, especially public policy in the sense that, you know, how people and countries um, deal with global pandemics like this, like COVID, um, are, are grounded in public policy and they're grounded in how these policies <clears throat> intermingle with each other. Um, you know, how we handle uh, healthcare burdens and how we handle healthcare accessibility in, in, in developed countries and, and underdeveloped countries. Um, so COVID and everything that's happening right now is very pertinent to what I want to study. Um, and I think that there's a lot to be said about, uh, like I said, public policy in terms of, of healthcare and healthcare, especially in, in the scope of pandemic right now. So it's definitely something that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in and, and, and want to, um, you know, maybe have a, an effect on in the future. We'll go next to Lou Samoji. Congratulations, Cameron, on your achievement there. One of the questions I always like to ask with walk-ons is as much as you excel academically and probably could devote even more time there, what is it that gives you that inspiration to also play football when you know maybe playing time might not be uh, quite as much as, as you know certainly when you were a star in high school and maybe attention could be given to other areas of study or social life or anything else what is it that you gain also uh, being a member of the football team yeah um one of the one of the major things that I think comes along with being a Notre Dame football player is is the platform you're given, and I think it's a it's a not only a, um, a, a privilege, but I think it's also a great responsibility. Um, you know, Notre Dame has one of the greatest fandoms in the in the in the world, I would say, and um, having that platform as a player allows you to do a lot more and allows you can do a lot more good or bad, and and you know. I've chosen to hopefully do good with it, um, whether it's helping in the community or, or using, trying to use my platform or trying to use Notre Dame football's platform to reach more people. Um, and that helps me, you know, deal with not seeing the, the fruitions of my labor sometimes um, from the field. But at the same time, being part of something greater, um, you know, like I was in high school, being part of something greater than myself, uh, pays dividends as well to, to what makes you stick with the process like this, um, you know, with Coach Kelly and, and Coach Taylor and, and the strength staff, uh, they develop a culture of, of family and a culture of, of um, goal, having a goal that's bigger than oneself. And I think that's helped me uh, throughout this whole process, uh, despite the, the setbacks and the, the tribulations that come with being a walk-on. 
We'll go next to Mark Skoll. Pam, congratulations. I'm just curious, when you found out the news, how did you find out? Uh, was it a phone call, a text, an email? What was that like, getting that, that uh, finding out? And then uh, what did you do as soon as you found out? Uh, yeah, so it was, um, it was an email, actually. Uh, I got the notification of the email right as I was going into a lift. And I didn't want to look at the email because I didn't want to be negatively potentially negatively affected in the lift. And I just didn't want to deal with it. So I put it away, went to my lift, came out of it. And um, I remember I was, I was with Ian actually, and, and I was telling, he knew, he knew I was in his process and I was telling him about it. I told him that I'd got the email and I didn't want to look. And I have a tendency to not really look at these things uh, or to push off looking at these things. Um, and I, Ian knew this too, and he, he made me look at it. And he actually looked at the email itself and read it. Um, and the email didn't really wasn't very clear at first and he, he was like I, I think you got it I'm pretty sure you got it and I read it and then I realized that I had got it um, and I was ecstatic obviously but the uh, ecstatic and jubilation of the moment was was short I mean it, we had I practice in another 30 minutes and meetings to go to so I kind of bottled it up and went to meetings and stuff but you know my teammates uh, my friends my family everyone was ecstatic coach Taylor the running back room they they were all, uh, you know, overjoyed when I told them. Um, they they had all been privy to the process this whole time, um, and keeping a close eye on it as well. So everyone was was really really happy for me, and and I was also motivated to to try and, uh, you know, continue on to the next pro next step in the process. We'll go next to George Bashura. Cameron, um, as a senior and being in the situation that you're in, um, with this Rose Scholar activity. What is the best information you can share with an underclassman to make sure that they set themselves up for success, not just on the field, but also in the classroom? Because you got to succeed in the classroom, right, as well as the field to get some playing time. So right. what would be the best advice you can give to that incoming student or an underclassman? Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest thing with me and, and what I think – um, can pay dividends to a lot of people is uh, finding things that you're passionate about. Um, and I, I kind of harp on this before, but but when you find things that you're passionate about, um, sacrificing things uh, to ac accomplish those things you're passionate about, uh, turn less from sacrifices and more into uh, just steps necessary along the way that you're willing to make to achieve these goals. Um, and, and, you know, if you come in as an underclassman, you're passionate about football, uh, you're passionate about school, I think sacrificing, you know, the other superficial things maybe like um going out all the time going to the the party or going to the uh um event um you know whereas you could stay in or study or you know work out keep keep honing on your craft go to meetings you know there's a lot of sacrifices that young football players have to get used to making especially at a place like notre dame and um i think that if you can understand what you're passionate about and um, realizing that those sacrifices go towards what you're passionate about it makes it a lot easier and it makes it more um effective in doing so. And we'll wrap it up this afternoon with John Finneran. Uh, it's a two-parter again, Cameron. Uh, first of all, um, what what's a typical day for you on the football field like at Notre Dame um, as compared to where, what it was like at Edwardsburg? And then the final question I guess I need to ask is how many times have you seen the movie Rudy? Um, yes, my normal day is very different than what I would say my normal day was at Edwardsburg. Uh, obviously, you know, I was starting both ways at Edwardsburg. Um, so I was on a different side of practice in terms of uh, running the, you know, our offensive players and, and running our defensive schemes. Um, whereas now I'm, you know, primarily on the offensive scout side of the ball. Um, and I've learned to embrace and love that role with the other offensive scout guys. You know, we challenge ourselves to come out and compete every day against our starting defense and we give them a run for their money sometimes, um, which inherently makes our defense better. Um, so it's a different, I'm on, I'm on, you know, I'm still on offense, but I'm on a different side of offense, I guess you could say. Um, and I've learned to love it and I, I've learned to appreciate the role. Uh, in terms of Rudy, I've seen Rudy uh, multiple times. Um, not recently, actually, but I've seen Rudy. Uh, I remember the first time I saw Rudy, um, my mom actually showed it to me, and uh, I could pick out places uh, in the movie that I knew on Notre Dame's campus, um, which I thought was just ridiculous because I never knew, you know, uh, a movie where anywhere I knew of because I was so young. But um, maybe I'll go watch it now uh, for some more motivation. 
All right, and we will end it there. Thank you very much, Cam. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>